Hey, welcome back family to the second episode of Sneaker Stories. I am Julian, the creator and director, and the sneaker of this episode is the beautiful classic Air Max 1. Released in 1987 and designed by the man, the legend, Tinker Hatfield. I'm sorry, he designed a lot of the shoes I love. I'm sorry. This is a beautiful classic and it has been retro in some beautiful styles. And it was also the first sneaker to have the exposed airbag technology in the sole. And hey, pay attention to this segment in the near future. I will be doing giveaways about this segment. So stay tuned and let's get into this interview with Matt Sampson. Well, my name is Matthew from Philadelphia, and on YouTube, I mostly do sneaker reviews, but sometimes I might pick up a clothing haul or stuff stuff like Funko Pop, little anime toys. So what got me into sneakers was my good friend named Herb. I used to wear only shell top Adidas, and he pulled me to the side one day. He was like, yo, I like you, you cool, but you gotta change that, man. So he uh, actually bought me my first pair of Jordans, which was a pair of 13 playoffs, and it's never looked back since then, man. So what made me start the channel was during the pandemic, I realized there's nobody from my city who is doing anything with sneakers. So it's people from LA, Atlanta, different places that, oh, you can buy the shoe here, you can buy the shoe here, but nobody in my town saying, oh, you know, you could go here, you could go to Eighth and Market, you could go back to Germantown to get a pair of shoes. So I just, I love shoes and I just want to share that with people. So the sneaker YouTubers that inspire me, it's a couple, is uh, Tony D2 Wild, he's from Atlanta. Uh, guy named and a guy named Mike Rich from Atlanta. Then it's also a dude named Fomer Simpson. I believe he's from California. Um, Tony inspires me because he promotes what he likes. Um, he does some hype shoes, some stuff like that, but it's normally what he likes. And he also has a clothing brand um, that I'm also trying to get into my own brand as well. So it's like it's showing you the stuff to take to get where you want to go. Uh, the guy Mike Rich, he's a family man. So I have a daughter. He incorporates his family in his videos. And he's another person who buys what he likes. And we actually wear the same size. So when he does his videos with his own foot and you can see like, okay, that looks all right on his foot. I might be able to grab that. And also uh, the guy, Fomer Simpson, he has, I think we're like a size bigger than mine. So it's always good to see people who wear the same size, wear the same body shape as mine, put a shoe on, put an outfit together with it so I can know if I want to go that direction to get this shoe. So my prized possession are my Chunky Donkeys. Um, they're going for crazy amounts on the retail resale market, but thank God I was able to catch them on resale. I mean, retail took me a while. It took me three phones, but I got them. So the story behind the shoe is I knew they were coming out. I was calling uh, sneaker stores in the city that I know, like the skate shops that sell them, couldn't get them. They wasn't letting them go. So I took my cell phone, I took my girl phone, I went to my mom's house, got her phone, and I sat there on the sneaker app and was refreshing, refreshing. And when I got the you got it purchase, I was I was excited. Like test. It was it was a good day, man. My top three, number one would be the uh, red October Kanye's when he was with Nike. Second one is a true blue three Jordan. Third one, the Tiffany Diamond Supply Dunks. My opinion about resale, when it, the good portion of it, it allows people to become business owners. Um, it opens a lot of doors for a lot of people. And you never know, like we all might've fell on bad times and you might have that shoe in your closet that could bring four or $500. And you could, you know, keep yourself fed, keep your family together. And the way I look at it with shoes, you love them, you buy them because you like them, but you can always get them back. And like the bad side is for the people who overdo it. Like the people who have these bots who get 30 to 40 pairs of shoes, don't know nothing about shoes, don't get care less about them. And you're just beating people over the head, two, three, four hundred dollars increases for people who just really want them because they love them or they just want to wear them. So that's like the good and the bad with them. Yeah, that, that situation with the uh, with the lady, with the Herbert lady and her son, it I don't think it should be, it shouldn't be allowed to happen. Um, I know, f I have friends who work at the Nike store 
and they can't buy multiple pairs of shoes with their discount. It has to be their size and it has to get sent to their house. So I don't understand how somebody that high up with that much power, and she oversaw the sneaker app, so she literally had control over it. And it doesn't under, I don't understand how somebody could just give their child all of those shoes. And then she resigned, so she was still able to probably keep her pension, her retirement, and just bank off the money that her son made. So I just really think like it should be something in place for for that, to stop that, to stop the bots, to just give people a fair chance who really want to buy the shoe. My name is Matthew Sampson and this is my sneaker story.